Hello, hello. I'm Strider, your host here at Author in the Headlights, and thank you for joining us. And if you want to hit that subscribe button, you won't miss a single episode. Uh, for today's episode, we have Rita Reale, Rita M. Reale, if I remember right. Yeah. Thank you for joining us, Rita, and hello. Thank you for having me. I'm so glad you invited me. Now, you are not just an author, which we're going to go into your books, but you do other things, too. You've got a business and background, and tell us about some of that. Yes, I'm a professional editor. My uh, business name is The Persnickety Proofreader. I've been I like in business. it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I've been in business since May of 2000. Um, I had just left uh, an editor, a news editor position for the newspaper of the Catholic Archdiocese of Hartford up in Connecticut. Uh, I had been there three years and I wanted to take some time off and finish the great American novel, which took a lot longer than that. It does. Um, <laughs> and Actually, that's how we met first off, because uh, we connected with you as an editor to mm -hmm. put on Durham and Publishing's author's resources page. Correct. And then I found out that you were a writer too. And I said, wow, hey, we've got to have you on the show. So yeah. here you are. Good stuff. Thank so you. editing. Now that's an absolutely important must have for all authors. Oh, uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, you want your reader to spend disbelief but you don't want to go so far as to take things to extremes. Um, and, an, and an editor will, will find some of those things. I was reading a book written by a woman I knew from the Connecticut Authors and Publishers Association of which I'd been a member for many years. Um, and she wrote about this large Italian Catholic family in New York City. She drummed that detail into the reader's heads about a dozen times in the first chapter. This is a large Italian Catholic family in New York City. And Christmas Eve, this large Italian Catholic family in New York City went to midnight mass at the Cathedral of St. John the Divine. This is not believable. The large Italian Catholic family in New York City would go to midnight mass at St. Patrick's, the Catholic cathedral, and not the Episcopal cathedral of St. John the Divine. <laughs> I pointed that There's out a... to the author, and she said, well, it's already published. <laughs> Change it. That is important to readers. Uh, in fact, even in my books, I get comments back that corrects things for me or lets me know something's wrong here, something's off, something... And you need to listen to your readers because mm -hmm. they they take it they take it personal. I take oh, it yeah. personal. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh so yeah. You got In it. In fact, I have beta readers for all my books. I I started actually with the third book because I didn't know what a beta reader was before. I, agree. I started with the third book, the the unintended hero, and um, a couple people were folks who had read the first two books and were familiar with the characters, and they gave me some terrific insights. One woman absolutely hated my main character. I was like, how can you hate Mark? She was, I was, the, the character is involved in an international incident on a plane en route to Portugal on his honeymoon. She was like, this woman said, I hated him. I was rooting for him to bleed out on the plane when he gets shot. Like, <laughs> Okay, <laughs> not much I can do with that. But they're but, reading, they're paying attention. That, exactly, that, exactly. She, thought, she thought he was whiny and, and annoying <laughs> and she wanted him to die. And I have a fantastic editor. Um, I've had people say, well, you're an editor. Can't you edit your I own like stuff? like that. Oh, Even editors no. have editors. Absolutely. You cannot do your own stuff because... I know what I'm expecting to read. So my eyes will gloss right over any mistakes. Well, our mind does read what it, I mean, it sees 
what it expects, what it expects to, see. to see. Exactly. You, you exactly. can't proofread your own work. It just doesn't work. Exactly. And that's why I have a fantastic editor. It's so important to work with an editor you you love and you trust. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and that is so important. Every here we'll say it to every to all you new authors out there, every author needs has to have their book edited. Absolutely. That's before the proofread. That is editing right. for content editing. Mm -hmm. And there's gosh, there's probably five or six different kinds of edits you can have, but please, right. please have it edited. Don't yes. just blast it through and publish it yourself and say, look, I'm an author. It may be, but just think how much better it could be if it was edited. And yes, yes it takes a few weeks longer. Honestly, it does. Mm -hmm. But get it done. Get it done right. If you're going to do it, yes. put the effort in, get it done right. Mm -hmm. so, Persnickative proofreader. Yes. All right. And you can get with that with uh, DermaPublishing.com's author's resources page. That is so cool. But now on to the other things for the readers out there, not just the writers. For the readers, you are an author and you've got, well, now you've kind of two different genres, but the Sheldon Family Saga. Yes. And that's what you're famous for. We have six books out there, well, something like that. It. I have published the sixth book the, that's one right behind Brother, Brothers by Betrayal. That came out in January. Um, that is the sixth in the seven volume family saga. I am now working on Full Circle, which is the last book. Right. It was only ever supposed to be a trilogy. But along the way, the characters decided that they had stories to tell and I needed to tell them. I know absolutely what you mean when you start writing and get into that flow of it, it, it writes itself. We have some concept of where it's going, but it actually does itself. It's very unique. Only a writer will understand that because the story does write itself. It's, it's odd. Yep. Actually, Glimpse of Emerald, the, the first book in the series, the characters showed up 47 years ago. I was 14 years old. I was sitting in Sister Teresita's freshman English class at Mary Immaculate Academy in New Britain, Connecticut. And I was trying to pay attention to what the good sister was saying, but I had these two voices in my head and they were talking about the price of broccoli. And I was going, what? Okay, that is unique. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, would you guys shut up? So they, they calmed down for a little while, but then they picked up again during earth science class. And frankly, what they were saying in my head was far more interesting than Sister Christine droning on about igneous rock formations. So I started taking notes. That That is, that's an amazing way to start. I mean, to conceive a story and so long ago in the, that's a unique way. I have honestly never heard that particular one before mm -hmm. as an author, as, as a job in talking to authors. Mm -hmm. It's amazing the stories behind the stories, how they came about. It really is. It's one of the fun things that I do here. It's just like, but that's a, that's a good one. It's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, see, high school is good for something. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes. How long yes. does it take you to write a book? Um, it really depends on the book. Glimpse of Emerald took it from inception where Gary and Michaela are talking about broccoli to when I got published, it was 40 years. Um, Diagnosis Love, the second book in the series took, I don't know, four years to write and, and massage into some publishable format. Uh, I believe the shortest one was The Unintended Hero, which is my favorite of all the books. Just don't tell the others, okay? Um, that one took me about a year and a half. I actually, I finished that one about three weeks ahead of schedule. I had planned to have it done by the end of June or the middle of June. And it was done by the, the end of May. Yeah, I find it takes about a year and a half to write a book. Yeah. It's too long. They should be, 
I was told by somewhere that that less than a year, that way you keep your audience. If it's a series in particular, mm -hmm. if it's singles, that's not so bad. But yeah. in a series, you need to continue to put out there. And mm -hmm. I am slower than that. There's just other things in life like this that get in the way yeah. of writing. And this right. Time too. But okay. I still plug away at it and get it work there. So you've got another one coming up. I presume it's pretty well on the road. Uh, I've got about 3,500 words written. Not well, much. All right. No, but not it's, much. You're I expect the final version will be about 84. Five to 90,000 words because this one is going to wrap up all the all the relational ends that yes. have been that's, left. That's, that's an interesting component now to the writers out there that in a trilogy or a series if you're writing the last book or even last in a set mm -hmm. you have to make sure all those bits and pieces are brought together all those tail ends of things are up. accounted for Yep. Yeah, and I, I'm doing that at the moment, which is taking some extra time because I thought I'd be ready, thought I was going really good. Then I get through and say, wait a minute, we're, we missed this and this and this. And now I've got to go back through and add them in somewhere. So mm -hmm. that is critical. And that takes yeah. extra time. The thing is, with these books, these are all standalone novels. So you yeah. can read The Unintended Hero without having read Diagnosis, Love, or oh, that's, that's good. Uh, Second Chances. It's it's the same characters, but you find them at different points in their lives. The only book that I wrote because readers clamored for it was The Unintended Hero. Because when they finished with Diagnosis Love, they're like, what happens to Mark and Marie? Yeah, yeah. So I had to, I had to write that room. to yep. explain what happened with them. Sounds good. And really interesting because because we connected through mm -hmm. your persnickety proofreading and now the authorship on there. So we got you double backed at Durham and Publishing, mm -hmm. um, both in the bookstore and as the author's resources page. Mm -hmm. So excellent. And when your new book gets done, let me know, please. And Great. we'll add that into the link too. All and right. now you have one. Now, what genre would you put that in? I classify myself as a pro-life Catholic author. I write pro-life Catholic fiction. All right. I've had people kind of look down their nose at me and give a dismissive sniff. You know, your books aren't Christian because your characters swear. And I'd lean in and I'd say, yeah, well, they also poop and have sex. What's your point? <laughs> <laughs> and they'd get all flustered uh yep life is not always pretty but no it, it's not it happens you know? no it's not and even the best characters do horrendous things they do that sometimes that behavior. builds a character and that yeah. character arc where they have problems and they repair them or get better and mm -hmm. grow out of them that character arc carries the reader through the story because you can yes. actually get mad. You truly can get mad at a character. I've done that. Like, what an idiot. Why would you do that? And you almost exactly. put the book down. So that is part of writing and part of a story and part of life. And you you have to accept it. <laughs> yeah. And besides, you're the author. You wrote it the way you want to write it. It's yeah. your story. It's my if story. If you like it, they'll read it. And we hope you do read it. That's That's why we write it. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Uh, Rita, we are running out of time. Okay. And like I said, when your new book gets out, let me know. Mm -hmm. There is going to be another book out before Full Circle. Oh, what that is it? Is, well, I've also written a children's book. I knew that. That's right. The, the Purriest Kitty, Kitty Finds His Home. I knew that. The second book in that series, The Purringest Kitty Misplaces His Purr, is going to be out. I like that, too. Christmas. Actually, I do. I read kids' books. I've got a whole pile of them in the class. i got grandkids, too. Kids and grandkids. So that's that's the way things are. And I love them. And honestly, yep. my wife being an elementary school vice principal mm -hmm. now but she's taught all the grades we have so many kids books and it's important to get kids to read 
Yes. Anyway, more fun and more stuff. And that will be on our webpage too. And okay. guess what? We just got told that we're running out of time. So we got to okay. wrap this up. So thank you so much for being part of us today. Strider, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. And for the rest of you, thank you for sitting in here and listening to us. And don't forget to leave me notes. And we'll see you next time at Author in the Headlights, sponsored by DurhamandPublishing.com. Check out everything there, too. <laughs>